We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this good news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven, and you are free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love and comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the
Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourselves, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The Gospel of John speaks of Christ as the true light coming into the world. In commemoration of that coming, we light candles for the four weeks leading to Christmas and reflect on the coming of Christ. It is significant that the church has always used that language, the coming of Christ, because it speaks to a deep truth. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming, always entering a troubled world, a wounded heart. And so we light the first candle, the candle of hope, and dare to express our longing for peace, for healing, and the well-being of all creation.
The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near. At the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, 
keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, as we enter into a new church year and focus now on the Gospel, Mark, we enter by way of the 13th chapter and the conclusion of our Gospel text today in verse 37, the writer of the Gospel said this, And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Keep awake. Here we are in the beginning of a new church year, a new church season, and yet our gospel texts continue to be centered around this whole notion of the end of the world. This, coupled with the ongoing pandemic, is getting to be a little old, to be honest. As we embark on this season of preparation, this season of waiting, the season of blue, the color that is meant to point toward hope, we hear Jesus again saying, keep awake. To be honest, keeping awake has been the least of my problems during this prolonged pandemic time. This has been a personal challenge to simply go to sleep. I've had a number of bouts with insomnia, and I would not be being honest with myself if I denied that it had, had anything to do with the conditions during this pandemic. When I hear see Jesus say, keep awake, I want to say, Jesus, actually, I want to sleep. And maybe to borrow a phrase from the rock group Green Day, instead of wake me up when September ends, it's wake me up when December ends, or of course, the year 2020 ends, or when this worldwide pandemic ends. I would rather be asleep until it's all over. Recently, I had to have a tooth pulled. I broke the tooth during the second day of the pandemic way back in March. Of course, my dentist had shut down because of the growing virus threat. And because I wasn't experiencing any pain, I was able to wait for many months before, before having to have it removed. The thing is, though I dread going to the dentist and having anyone touch my gums or teeth, the reality is, I went into that office for the extraction that morning, and they gave me a shot. And I barely remember anything until I walked in the door to be back at home. Now, Karen did drive me, so I wasn't doing anything reckless. However, the thing about it all was that once I received the anesthesia, out I went. And I did not have to deal with the painful reality of a precarious tooth removal. It is tempting to want the same approach during this entire pandemic. Wake me up when it's over. I don't want to go through all this. One could imagine that if one was addicted to a substance, that the temptation to break one's sobriety would be huge during these times. And then we encounter our gospel text today as we enter into this time of waiting, more waiting, and Jesus says, keep awake. Well, maybe fresh off our Thanksgiving dinners, when maybe we still have some tryptophan in our systems, we are a little sleepy. We are drowsy. We are drowsy of a pandemic. We are drowsy of new rules. We are drowsy of staying home. We are drowsy of potential regulations that limit our freedom to go places and be with the people we want to be with. Like I mentioned at our congregational meeting, when this all started, we worried about Holy Week and Easter, that maybe we wouldn't be able to have it never imagining that we would be enduring all this through Thanksgiving and now are facing the holiday time of Advent and Christmas with all this still in place. It is dawning, and it does overwhelm us at times. Why does Jesus say, keep awake? Because just a few verses earlier, he said it's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts the slaves in charge each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, 
or at cock crow, or at dawn. And he also said, about that day, no one knows when it is, or that hour, not even the angels in heaven. So is God really calling me to stay awake and never sleep, literally? Well, of course, if we encountered another Christian with red eyes who was torturing themselves to say, I better not go to sleep, during this Advent season, because I heard this Mark gospel from the Mark that God wants me to stay awake. Well, we'd probably be making some phone calls. When Jesus urges us to stay awake, he is telling us not to become lax in our serving and in our proclamation of the kingdom of God. God is pointing toward a time when things will be made right in this world. But in the meantime, we are not called to go asleep or receive anesthesia. Instead, we are called to play a role and point to this inbreaking kingdom. Because the kingdom of God's news is that love, not hate, abundance, not scarcity, calmness, not anxiety, confidence, not fear, forgiveness, not brokenness, rest, not despair, peace, not war, will be the final act of God's coming reign. This reign broke in with a long-promised child born in Bethlehem as the Messiah of the world. It started there, but we are still waiting for the final culmination of it all. And Jesus is telling us that while God will reign, we are called to be a part of this kingdom. We are called to share the good news with others. We are called to be about work in this kingdom, even in the midst of challenges, even in the midst of hard times, even in the midst of pandemics. We are to strive to love the neighbor as ourselves. Of course, this is not easy. It is not easy during normal times. It is not easy during other self-induced anxiety and hustle and bustle of the holiday time of the year, when normally we seem to ramp up our stress in our lives anyway but throw a worldwide spreading virus on top of it, and now doing it for months and months at a time, while more and more people we know become infected, and more and more people are dying each day, there are moments when it simply can get to us, get the best of us, and get even at our foundations of faith. And perhaps we are tempted to give in to the chaos, Give in to the craziness. Give in to the overwhelming sensation of how am I going to get through this day or the next day. But it is precisely in the midst of darkness that the light of the world is coming. It is precisely when we are tempted to throw in the towel that we can once again encounter the hope for this world. It is precisely when we think the world only has bad news to give that we can turn and hear once again and proclaim the good news. It is precisely when wars rage and conflicts consume that we hear the news about the wonderful counselor and the prince of peace. It is in the words of St. Paul in our second lesson for this day from his letter and his greeting to the Christians in Corinth that describes how we are to await for the advent of Jesus Christ. He reminds them to continue to strengthen one another until the coming day of the Lord with these words. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as a testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the rebuilding of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him. You were called into the fellowship of his Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. May we seek to live into the reign of God during the difficult times. May we, in this time of Advent, continue to wait and prepare, knowing that in the hip pocket of our lives, we have Christ with us always to guide us through the good and the bad, the easy and the difficult. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven He is seated by the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. 
Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer, especially during this pandemic. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our, in our families and the congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the creator of the stars bless your advent waiting, the long expected savior fill you with love and the unexpected spirit guide your journey. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, prepare the way. Thanks be to God.